and the paint is the fat. Oh, hey, kitty. They wanted the sweet strangulation of the waist. Wow. Hey, that hip spring is impressive. Hello, my name is Autumn Adam, and we are here at Dark Garden, New Orleans. And today I'm speaking with Ashley Griffith about her paintings, which you can see behind us. It's part of an exhibit called Artifacts, and we'll be talking about some of her process and her interests, and actually our shared interest in lingerie. So Ashley, tell me a little bit about uh, what inspired you to paint exactly um, what you have here. Yeah, I found most of these objects at uh, just like consignment or thrift stores in Chicago when I was learning how to paint. And I, well, I loved particularly seeing how the boning formed to someone's body and trying to imagine, you know, who they were and what the story was there. And they were so beautifully made too. Like, I don't own any, I didn't own anything that I would wear on the daily. It was that intricate and mm -hmm. that, so it just, it really transported me to a different kind of life, you know, a different person's world. Yeah, so you're saying that you're um, about to be studying uh, fashion design. Costume design. Costume design, sorry yeah. about that. That was me who studied fashion design, not so much costume design, and fashion history. Very cool. And um, one of the really interesting things as you're studying and presenting costumes is you're putting a person into a garment that then helps them portray their character. Absolutely. And um, one of the things that I've always said about corsetry is if you want to portray a person from the 19th century, you absolutely cannot do it without a corset. It starts at the basic, the undergarments, right? That's the silhouette. No, it's, <laughs> I completely agree. So these are trompe paintings, which is just French for to trick the eye. Um, and it goes through a process of you do a you know a very meticulous drawing from life and then you transfer the drawing onto a panel well, this is a panel you can do it onto a canvas or whatever you're painting on and then you sort of start layering thin um, like not watered down as this oil paint so you use like a turpentine or paint thinner to do it and then you sort of build up there's a principle that's thin to fat and the paint is the fat oh hey kitty <laughs> so you build up and up and up, um, getting kind of gloopier and more textural as you work out. And then at the very end, my absolute favorite part of doing, especially these like historical or antique garments, um, was all the kind of the, the yellowing and the staining. So this is all done with glazes, which is almost pure fat. It's just linseed oil uh, with little pigments suspended in it. And you can really, you just see the wear and the tear, and in a way, you kind of put the garment through its, through what its own life was like. So it was really pristinely made, and then you kind of scuff it up, and that's the very like end cherry on top part of the whole process. Yeah, these are life size, so it's pretty tiny, really. Um, this, you know, it's all stretched out, so and it, you know, it looks a lot bigger, but I tried it on even, and it was it's a tiny little thing. Mm -hmm. So here we are with Ashley's three other pieces, and uh, you can see how great they all look together. Ashley, tell me, um, you called them the sisters? Yes, they're the sisters. Uh, I've always imagined them all together like this in a beautiful boutique like this one. So I think they really fit perfectly in with the aesthetic of the place. And um, yeah, I would love to know a little bit, if I could pick your brain, what time period these are from or anything about them because I don't I'm not really an expert so it's fairly I mean not actually seeing the pieces themselves um, but seeing your incredible representation of them um, the one up to our right that is um, what people might call a merry widow um, mostly worn in the 1950s and 60s it's got um, some really beautiful lace and what's incredible about these garments is they're so structurally sound mm -hmm. and they're just, they look so delicate. Mm -hmm. um, once upon a time, I'm going to tell a really short story, um, we received a letter at Dark Garden that had clearly been run through a translation, a language translation program. 
Um, this was long before there was uh, Google Translate. Mm -hmm. And they said um, that they wanted the sweet strangulation of the waste. Yeah. And I, I often think of that, I think it's so poetic. And with, when you're looking at something that is so light as the, the Merry Widows, where it's just maybe two layers of fabric, mm -hmm. um, but it's all about the actual structure, the, the shape of the bones, uh, sorry, not the shape of the bones, people will say that, it's the shape of the pattern pieces so that it creates the form of um, the, the sil fashionable silhouette mm -hmm. of the moment. Um, and then I'm gonna say the black one up over here to our left, that is a black satin, probably uh, Mary Widow or Bustier. Um, let me look closer at it. So that is life size. Yeah. And that's that's what? Yeah, that was life size. I don't know, it's on the middle. It's they're very small. Is it, Some is it the are same, very small. Is it the same as the one pulled out the bra? No, no, no they're okay. different garments. Um, yeah, it, uh, I think it just went right in the middle. So just that might mm -hmm. be um, an actual wasby. <laughs> The actual waspy, um, referring to the wasp waist, mm. and um, to me that suggests probably 1950s, maybe 60s, um, but small waist, the silhouette of both of those eras, 40s, 50s, 60s, was small waist, fuller hips. Um, the ideal was a very, like, very narrow this direction, mm -hmm. wider this direction, so very shapely hips, but still also quite slender. And um, there's something about the way that uh, pat garments were made at that time that could really create that shape. Yeah, there's an interesting panel in it that's made of a different type of fabric mm -hmm. on this side. Mm -hmm. um, is that, is for, it, I think it goes right in the front, right? Right, yeah, so there's even more structure in the very front to just really flatten out the tummy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then I'm really curious about the bra in the, the two-piece set here. To me, it almost the way that you have rendered the fabric, it looks like it might be leather or... Yeah, it was like a vinyl maybe. Vinyl, yeah. yeah, a leathery vinyl, so mm -hmm. definitely something in that family. So, probably 80s. Yeah, <laughs> well that's why I lit it with the pink and the blue mm -hmm. light, because I wanted Perfect. it to be very modern feeling. Mm -hmm. um, I think I, the ones that I thought were a little bit older, I just lit with, you know, very naturally with uh, just a regular light, um, but also the... The, what, what did you call it? The orange one? Mary Widow. The Mary Widow. Um, I want I want that one with an orange light because I, I also kind of got a vibe that it was a little bit more modern. Mm -hmm. piece of, yeah. Right, a little more modern than the first piece that we were talking mm -hmm. about. So the first piece we were talking about uh, extends down over the hips mm -hmm. and um, then this one stops at the waist. So I was just looking at this painting a little bit more closely, and I absolutely love that you included the label. Yeah, uh, you wouldn't be able to read it. It is just smidges of paint, but it does come across, yeah, I think. Definitely gives a sense of it. I love that each piece has a story to tell. So speaking of stories that garments tell, would you like to see some of my antique pieces? I would here? love to see some of your antique pieces. So these are four pieces that I have in our, our tiny little um, museum here at the shop. Um, they're pretty unique pieces, all of them. This one, I'll talk about this one first because it's, um, I don't know, it's not a corset, obviously. Uh, very likely a 1930s bra. Yeah. And the silhouette of this is so different from the pieces that you've painted. This would be just the suggestion of some support, uh, keep the chest a little bit closer to home because again, probably 20s or 30s when the silhouette was less about breasts, <clears throat> a more um, boyish silhouette was oh. ideal. And these two have some similarity. Mm -hmm. They're both very short. Um, this one was very practical. It's. Uh, it's a cotton ribbon. This is called a ribbon corset. You may. Can I touch it? Yeah. Thank you for asking. Um, so each one is, it's a piece of ribbon and it creates some shape. It's mostly just waist reducing to see how much shape is built in. So this is the little sport corset, cotton ribbon, and it's amazing how much shape is actually 
in these just straight pieces of fabric. This one, when I was putting it on the table, I saw that it has had quite a history. Um, so even two of the busk pieces have been broken off. So this, this corset got a lot of wear. Um, this suggests that it was taken in. So it may have, it was probably a ready to wear corset that didn't fit perfectly. And um, even back here, the, the bones had started to come out the top of the corset. So they've sewn leather over that part, which you can see right here. Oh yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah, I think this one's probably my favorite just because of the color in it. Um, I don't, I don't think I've seen something that's this bright before. Mm -hmm. um, and it's got quite a lot of color detail in it. So too. much detail in this one. It is likely that it was decorated to be uh, visible. Like I think that this was a showgirl corset oh. actually. And as you can imagine, this color was probably much, much brighter. Like the green hasn't faded that much, but because this is a shade of pink, that means that it's... it's the dyes don't last as long. Exactly so. Um, and then what kind of secrets does it have for us in here? So a lot of shape, look at this. Whee, that hip spring is impressive. What is the silhouette that um, your course, like what's, what do people really, what do people like? What do they? Mm. So the corsets that Dark Art makes are historically informed, but I n will never say this is an 1870s pattern or something like that, because um, I am starting with modern bodies. We can only shape modern bodies so much. We can definitely shape soft tissue, but for example, modern women's ribs are rounder at the bottom mm. than, uh, than somebody who would have worn, for example, this corset, because we don't, for the most part, grow up wearing corsets that are encouraging their bones into a more conical shape. When would, do you know when a, a young girl would start wearing a corset? You would have started quite young, and actually I do have a, uh, what's called a liberty bodice, mm -hmm. and it's a little, basically a very stiff undershirt. So you would have started with something like that, and then uh, you would move into something closer to this, mm -hmm. uh, maybe about 12. So mm -hmm. you, there's a transition, you go from short skirts to long skirts, you get a real corset, you start wearing your hair up. This piece is a Liberty bodice worn by both boys and girls, and basically the same shape for at least 50 years. Um, they didn't they didn't change this too much. So this one is probably 1930s. It's in pretty great condition, yeah. but you see ads for these uh, much much earlier. So the slices up the back, um, it does have little gussets back here at the hip for a little more shape. And what's stiffening it, rather than steel, um, these channels all have cording mm -hmm. in them. Um, well, Autumn, thank you so much for, well, being the home for my paintings right now, but also showing me your beautiful collection of, of these garments. It's, it's fascinating. I love I love imagining the society that these things came out of too, not just the individuals. I mean, they're so personal, but you know, they're also... It's like a snapshot into another time. Yeah, mm -hmm. it really is. So it's really special. I appreciated it thoroughly. Thank you. And thank you very much for entrusting us with your paintings. Our visitors have really enjoyed seeing them and they're so, they're so incredibly realistic. You know, people want to touch them because they think that it's the actual piece hanging there in the frame. Oh, really so good. it's a, definitely a <laughs> testament to your skill. Right? Exquisite, exquisite paintings. Thank you very much. Absolutely. So thank you so much for watching this. And if you enjoyed the information about my antique pieces, please stay tuned. I'll be doing an antique corset tea in August. Stay tuned for more ticket details. If you would like to learn more about Ashley and her work, 
please visit her website and Instagram. Um, yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay. the social media. Mm -hmm. Thank Fabulous. you. Thank you.